Well, my name is Greg Anton. Uh, I'm an attorney. I've been an attorney for about 40 years working on this issue. Uh, I was invited here to talk about a, a very important federal case that I'm working on that really affects uh, all the issues that are being discussed here. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, you'll soon find out that I feel very passionate about the cannabis issue. Um, I'm an attorney, my wife's a doctor, we have five adult children, and uh, we all care about it. Um, I worked in government early on as a lawyer. I was an uh, advisor to the, Cal the director of the California Youth Authority. I was a Marin County Deputy District Attorney. I've been in private practice for about 30 years. Um, In 1996, an exception to the marijuana laws was made uh, for medical use. In 1997, the Marin Alliance for Medical Marijuana, my client, uh, opened a marijuana dispensary. And the, the things that I'm saying here today are all, all, all a matter, matter of public record. Uh, the Marin Alliance opened in 1997. 97. In 1998, the federal government imposed an injunction on the dispensary, um, claiming that it was violating federal law, even though it was in compliance with, that, with the new state law. It was the first dispensary in the United States. It turned out to be the longest running dispensary in the United States. The woman, Linda Shaw, who, who ran the dispensary, was originally very concerned about the high incidence of breast cancer in Marin County, which is, to my knowledge, unexplainable. Um, but there were uh, a lot of people getting relief by using uh, from symptoms <coughs> of cancer uh, by using cannabis. Uh, the feds came in and instituted an injunction against her doing that. Nonetheless, the, the dispensary operated until December 2011. It was shut down by the federal government, along with about 400 other dispensaries in California. In 2014, January 2014, the mayor of Fairfax, which is a small town in Marin County, contacted me and said, Greg, we want the dispensary back. Is there anything we can do about that old injunction? Uh, he said, crime is up, people are selling marijuana on the streets, uh, tax revenues are down, things uh, are worse since the dispensary is gone, we want the dispensary back. The people selling marijuana on the street don't check IDs. And uh, we want the, the Marin Alliance back, which was very heavily re regulated. There were about 75 or 80 conditions of their use permit. The police were in the dispensary uh, at least a couple times a week, monitoring things. It was a very, very well-run, very small dispensary. A little waiting room with six metal chairs and, and people in wheelchairs, and, and it was a little field uh, using medical marijuana. So I went to the federal government and said, uh, what the mayor had said to me, and said, how about this injunction? There's, there are dispensaries operating right now in, in San Francisco County, and Alameda County, Sonoma County, and all over California. So let's, re let's uh, have a little, a little bit of reasonableness here and try to compromise and uh, let the people get their medicine. P dis what's happened is disabled people are driving from West Warren to places like San Francisco. So a tenuous situation. The government said, uh, no, we're gonna keep the judgment in place. In fact, the government has uh, very strongly resisted my efforts to, to remove this, this injunction. On October 17, 2015, a federal judge agreed with me that this injunction is not proper. And I'll just to step back a little bit. The United States government passed an appropriation bill, 
um, in December 2014 for the year 2015. They do that every year. It's an appropriations bill that finances the government. Everything from the military to the post office to everything. Included in this appropriations bill was Section 538, written by U.S. Congressman Rohrbacher and Farr, both California congressmen, that defunded the Department of Justice in regards to interfering with states' implementation of their own marijuana laws. They took the money away. They have a right to do that. Congress has a right to do that. It's a law. It was signed by Obama. The Department of Justice has ignored it uh, and just gone on about their business uh, arresting people for marijuana. <clears throat> so I got a ruling from a federal district judge, city judge in San Francisco in October 2015 saying, cut it out. Leave the people alone. The states have spoken. Stop. We don't have to look over the wording. We don't have to look over California. The wording in the floor discussion, the debate about the law was, we don't have to look over California's shoulder. They legalized marijuana in 1996, and here we are. What are we doing in bothering these states? That's what the judge said. So now we have the state of California, the federal judiciary, the United States Congress, and the people, the American people, all the polls show, are for having medical cannabis available to people. There's one entity that does not. That's the Obama administration. They are resisting to this day, I'm working on this case this week very hard, <coughs> they're investing a huge amount of resources against Congress, against the judiciary, against the people to keep cannabis illegal in the states that have legalized it. Or as I said on a, on a television interview on the Ninth Circuit Court steps, if 50 states legalize marijuana and they still say it's illegal, who is they? That's what I'm trying to figure out. So the unfortunate news and really astonishing news to me, even after working all these years on this subject, is um, that on December 19, 2015, the Obama administration appealed my decision that I had gotten in, in federal district court, and they're still fighting it. The good news, hopefully, is this, this case will most likely end up in the Supreme Court in the next 18 to 24 months, and the U.S. Supreme Court will finally speak on this issue of the support <coughs> uh, to everyone. So when I was 18 years old, smoking pot with my friends, we all said, well, when we get old enough to be judges or politicians, we don't have to worry about this issue. Here we are today. Um, I have really, really appreciate the efforts of people like Mr. Cooley um, trying to do something about this. There are people on all sides of the issue, but I don't believe that anyone wants to keep the status quo. The status quo is, is really, it's untenable. You can't tell, you can't tell what's going on. You can't tell if the federal law is preemptive or if the state law is a state law. If you're growing some medicine for yourself in your backyard and a sheriff comes to your house, it really, my experience is, depends on who the sheriff is and when his understanding of, law, of what happened. Someone might look at your collective uh, um, agreement papers and walk away. Someone might um, take all your medicine and maybe take your house, maybe take your children. Um, it depends. I, I talk to judges, I talk to prosecutors, I talk to my office officers, and everybody has a different opinion. So that's got to that's change. And I think everybody's recognizing that. And I, um, I want to thank Pat Leathers for doing this work to maybe try to clear this up so that people know what the law is. Um, and and, and that's, that's just so important. Um, so thank, thank you, everyone here, for your good work.
right, we'll let Paul have the mic now. 